This story picks up right where Mortal Kombat 10 left off. Shinnok has been defeated, and Dark Raiden is torturing him Game of Thrones style. Dark Raiden, corrupted by Shinnok's amulet, is hell-bent on protecting Earthrealm by any means necessary, and decapitates Shinnok with his lightsaber, I mean his lightning bolt. Kronika, Shinnok's mother and master of time, shows up fashionably late and vows to rewrite history and stop Raiden from unbalancing the Force. Uh, I mean, uh, history. Raiden enlists the help of Sonya, Cassie and Jackie to attack the main cathedral Netherrealm. The special Force strike team succeeds, but Sonya sacrifices herself to complete the mission. Give your dad a kiss for me. Revenant Liu Kong and Revenant Kitana then join Kronika in her quest to stop Raiden. She begins causing temporal anomalies by merging timelines together. F*** that bitch. Kotal Khan, the Emperor of Rome, I mean Outworld, is about to execute the Collector, spelled with a K, when he is interrupted by Kronika, also spelled with a K. She brings Shao Kahn, Baraka, Kung Lao and other dead warriors back from an alternate timeline because f*** you, storytelling. All hell breaks loose as the Khans battle it out over control of Outworld. Kotal gets the upper hand, but the battle ends when Devorah transports Baraka, Scarlet, Eren Black, Shao Kahn and Kano to her hive so she can recruit them into Kronika's army. Since Raiden is an immortal, there can only be one of him, thus erasing Dark Raiden from existence as young Raiden is brought into the current timeline because, you know, time travel? All the other warriors now have two versions of themselves in the same timeline. Young Raiden and the Earth Realmers make the alliance with Kotal before they head out to investigate energy signals coming from under the Wuxi Academy. Young Liu Kong and young Kung Lao overpower their dark counterparts before Garrus defeats them and steals vials of energy containing Earthrealm's life force. Meanwhile, Hanzo Hisashi and Sub-Zero team up to stop Sector from making Kronika an army of Cyber Lin Kuei. The Fire and Ice BFF succeed with the help of Syrax and destroy the factory. Sector's failure forces Garrus to hire the Black Dragon to revive Sector and rebuild the army of deadly ninja robots. Right then. Let's get to business. Raiden consults with the Elder Gods for guidance, and as usual, they're f***ing useless. Kronika recruits the Elder Jacks to her side by tempting him with a future where his daughter could leave a normal, boring life. Kotal Khan and Jay try to find Shao Kahn, but end up getting captured instead. The Black Dragon, along with the deadly ninja robots, destroy the Special Forces base and capture the young version of Johnny Cage and Sonya in the process. The Kanos force Sonya and Johnny to fight each other, Fight Club style, but Kashi's strike team assaults their hideout and saves her parents. Sonya finally kills both Kanos with some temporal anomaly magic. Thanks, Kano. For what? For reminding me of the rules. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kitana, Liu Kong, and Kung Lao go on a rescue mission to save Kotal and Jade, as well as secure an alliance with the Takatans. After gaining Baraka and Shiva's allegiance, they fight Shao Kahn and his warriors in the arena. Kotal is crippled in the battle before Kitana kills her stepfather and takes the throne as the new Khan of Outworld. Raiden sends young Jax and Jackie to get the crown of souls from Shang Tsung's island, but they're stopped by the older Jax and the older goddess Cetrian. Crazy enough, Cetrian is Kronika's daughter and Shinnok's sister. They're supposed to be the perfect balance of dark and light or something like that. Hasashi fights his younger self and right as he persuades him to join sides with the Earth Realmers, Devora buzzes in and poisons the older Hanzo. Old Scorpion dies and young Scorpion returns to the Fire Garden to help Raiden and crew. He is attacked by Raiden who believes Scorpion is evil. The young Scorpion manages to convince Louis Kong of his goodness, but Shinnok's amulet is once again corrupting Raiden. Liu Kong and Raiden begin an intense battle until Raiden sees visions of the same struggle throughout countless other timelines. He realizes that they're playing right into Kronika's schemes and lets go of Shinnok's amulet for good. Kronika takes Louis Kong and tells Raiden that they've done this thousands of times before and every time Raiden loses. With the help of Karen, a full legion of Earth Realmers and Outworlders sail to confront Kronika and her army. Revenant Liu Kong absorbs young Liu Kong's soul and confronts Raiden. Instead of fighting him, Raiden merges with him, creating Fire God Liu Kong. 
Their power level is over 9,000! Kronika is shocked. All war breaks out at the beachhead, and Louis Kong goes all super cyan god and wipes out Kronika's forces. Kong, Katana, and Kung Lao make it to the hourglass, but are too late as Kronika wipes out the timeline. Louis Kong, being a god, survives. He fights Kronika and viciously destroys her. A now mortal Raiden tells Louis Kong he can choose a partner to remake history as they see fit. Louis Kong chooses Katana as his partner, finally gets out of the friend zone, and everyone else dies. The end. This is your narrator Axel speaking, we hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching, like, comment and share and all that good stuff, and stay tuned for everything wrong with Mortal Kombat 11 coming in the next couple of days. Sayonara, see you later, audios.